What's it talking about? Be back up. When it says write it on the tables of your heart, how do you do that? What do, what do you think that's referring to? To the inner man. Okay? But the neck would refer to what? The outer man physically. Okay? So mercy and truth must be applied physically and spiritually. Okay? Truth. I'm going to move along. Truth and mercy. Truth says, listen to me. Truth tells Adam and Eve, if you eat of the tree, you'll die. Mercy says, there's a sacrifice. Okay? Truth says, If you steal, if you uh, uh, steal from your neighbor, get your hand cut off. Mercy says, make things right, and you can go on living. And truth is, truth is harsh. Truth is real. Truth gets your head cut off. Okay, but mercy steps in and, and gives second chances, Brother Billy. Mercy gives us an opportunity to make things right. Without mercy, one mess up and you're done. That's what truth is. That's why they couldn't, they could not fathom what Jesus was preaching and what Jesus was telling. They couldn't imagine Jesus uh, stooping down in the dirt beside a lady caught in the act of adultery because truth says what? Kill her. She's done for. Judge, jury, and executioner. But Jesus knelt down started writing in the dirt. Then he tells them, all right, whichever one of you don't have any sin in your life, kill her. The Bible said one by one by one they begin to walk away. Jesus raised his head and said, where are your accusers? She said, I don't know where they're at. He said, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Amen. That's the truth. The truth is, the Lord don't want you doing that. Amen. Mercy says, He's going to give you an opportunity to make it right. Which we have got to operate with this un within the same boundaries. <coughs> Keys to approval with man and God or with God and man. Not just with lip service, but practice and proven to the point that we search for opportunities to be merciful. We search for opportunities to share the truth wrapped up in mercy. Verse three and four, Proverbs 3 and 4. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. The end result of following these principles is always accompanied by mercy and truth. Is that we'll find favor with God, which is primary. And find favor with man, which is secondary. Why is it so important that we get favor with God and favor with man? Why is that so important? You try winning somebody to the Lord that don't like you. You try winning to somebody to the Lord that thinks you're a liar and a cheat and a no good for nothing. You try winning somebody to the Lord that knows you go around telling everybody they're lost all the time. That they're no good all the time. You're talking down to people. Humiliating people. That's why it's so important that we get approval with God. And this can be summed up. I, I talked about it Wednesday night. This can be summed up. You, see if y'all was listening. There are two commandments in the New Testament. The first one is what? Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, body, and strength. What's the second one? Love your neighbor as yourself. Upon these two things hang all the law and the prophets. You cannot, listen to me, you cannot love like the Bible says love without mercy. You can't do it. It's impossible. It's impossible. We will become greater witnesses to the love of God when the truth that we know 
The truth that we celebrate. The truth that is cut and dried, black and white, in the book. Listen to me. I, I don't want to be ugly and no way be condescending to anybody. And, and I, I know I, I've, got to, I've got to be careful because this stuff gets put out there now. But this, this, you're not in, listen to me, this morning you are not in the church of your choice. If, if that's the case, if that's the case, you're falling short. This is not about having the right social activities. It's not about having people that you'd like to hang around. It's not about finding what's a good fit for you. It's about finding somewhere you can fit. Okay? Somewhere that will change you and lead you into happiness. Uh, that will lead you into completion. That will lead you into fulfillment. That will lead you into the change that everybody's looking for. You say, I don't believe they're looking for change. You go ask the one that's waking up this morning with vomit all around him. Why, why'd you get liquored up last night? Why did you pour all that alcohol down you last night? Well, I'm going to have fun. I'm going to have a good time. Huh? Come on now. Did, didn't nobody say, nobody, unless they are completely off their rocker, will tell you, I did it so I could get sick this morning. Huh? I don't drink for the fun of it, I do it for the hangover. Huh? We get high to get away. Sleep around to be accepted, to feel good about yourself. And then go home and get a washcloth and soap and try to wash the filth off of you. Nobody sees the, the, the little gal fell down in the corner of a shower with tears pouring down her face. Feeling like the most worthless, worthless thing in the world. All because she was trying to find acceptance. Truth says... You don't want to get your hands dirty. Mercy and truth say, <laughs> if you just knew how much I loved you. If you just knew that you don't have to do nothing for me to accept you. Think there's nothing in it for me when truth and mercy are coupled together. Huh? The end result is the greatest witness. God have mercy. God have mercy. The end result of learning to apply mercy and truth. Think about it, Brother Billy. Not one time. Even Jesus sat at the well at noontime with a woman that had been married and divorced five times and was shacking up with the sixth one. That's in the book. He said, the one you have now is not your husband. Is that not true? Jesus, the creator of the world, he proved to her he knew all about her. And yet he was there. Brother Robbie, I think there's a very strong argument to be made that he, his must needs go through Samaria was her. You know, Sister Maria, think about it. He asked for her or for a drink. You know something? Brother Robbie, I cannot find one even hint of a scripture where he ever got it. Because the Bible says she left her water pot and run to the city. Think about it. Mercy and truth. He spoke truth to her. Which was what? Honey, you know you ain't doing right. And I know you ain't doing right. But here I am with you. What did she do? I preached about this. Y'all even used it as your little catchphrase for a while. I, I can't tell you how many people was, uh, would, would walk up and say, Come see. I saw people putting it on Facebook. Come see. Because she run to the city, Brother Pete. And she said, Come see a man. Come see a man that told me everything I ever did. I believe it's the Christ. Why did she... Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. What made her know he was the Christ? Because mercy, truth, 
Mercy. Truth. Truth says, if I know what kind of woman she is, I, I'm sorry about that, hon. If I'd have known you was going to come to the well, my bad. <laughs> the mercy sat down there with the truth. I said, I know everything there is to know about you. But if you knew who I was, you'd be asking me for a drink. If you knew who I was. The end result of mercy and truth is the greatest witness the world has ever known. You think about it. Think about it. He never even owned a home. He never owned more than the clothes that were on his back and the shoes that were on his feet. And in three and one half years, he impacted the world greater than any human being that has ever walked on the face of planet earth. And you know something, Brother Terry, it wasn't the fishes and the loaves. It wasn't the healing. It wasn't the miracles. Because if it was, there would have been a long line of people at that stage that morning when they said, do you want Jesus or do you want Barabbas? There'd been a whole line saying, that's a no-brainer. Barabbas is a noted thief and a robber and he's no good for nothing, no account. He, he's, he's horrible. Oh, but that man... <laughs> That's the guy right there. Hey, y'all got the wrong man. Mistake in identity. Somebody's messed up. If that was all, if all it took was good deeds. But then he hung on the cross and said, Hey, Lord, forgive them. For they know not what they do. And what what did the old soldier say, Brother Billy? When he bowed his head. Truly. Truly, he's the Son of God. It was mercy and truth. Mercy and truth. John 14 and 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. Proverbs chapter number 3 is in the Old Testament, in the Old Covenant, it's under the law. But Matthew 5 and 17 says, listen to me, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy. The, the, the crazy thing about the law, Brother Terry, is it had good intentions. But the Bible very clearly, oh God, help me right now. The Bible very clearly says, Brother Rice, that the law made nothing better. The law made nothing better. It was just a list of rules that they followed. And they were considered successful if they followed them. It didn't matter where the heart was necessarily. It was all about the outer man. But he told Jeremiah and he told Ezekiel, I'm going to put a new law and I'm going to put it on your heart. And Jesus Christ said, I'm not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law. The thing is, is it is Proverbs chapter 3. Oh God. Proverbs chapter 3 was just a good idea till Jesus Christ came along and showed that it can actually happen. And through the power of the Holy Ghost is how you love people that are unlovable. Through the power of the Holy Ghost is how you reach people that are unreachable. It's how you speak hope to the hopeless. Yeah, give help to the helpless. It's through the power of the Holy Ghost, through the fulfillment of Jesus Christ. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. What the law wanted to do but couldn't was accomplished through Jesus Christ. The truth, listen to me, the truth is forever settled. The Bible says very plainly, very clearly, except a man be born of the water and of the Spirit. That is baptism and the infilling of the Holy Ghost. In 3 and 3 it says, and in 3 and 5 of John it says, one place you can't see the kingdom, the other place you can't enter the kingdom. You're not going without the new birth. That's the truth. Amen. I said that's the truth. Amen. So, boy, that don't be kind of, kind of ugly, man. What's up with that? Preach about mercy and truth, and then you say that the truth is you got to be baptized in Jesus' name, and you got to be filled with the Holy Ghost, evidenced by speaking in other tongues. And the way I know that is, Sister Maria, Jesus told the disciples in twenty-four of Luke, "Go," he said. 
Thus it behooved Christ to suffer, and thus it behooved Christ to, to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in His name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Now what happened at Jerusalem is Acts chapter number 2 verse 1 through 4. Now when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it set upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. That was the beginning. And that's the way it had to be has to be preached in all the world, and that's the truth. That's the truth. That's the truth. It's not our interpretation of it. It's what the book says. It happened in Jerusalem. It happened in Samaria. It happened in Cornelius' house. And it happened with the disciples of John the Baptist who had been previously baptized by him. But they had to be rebaptized in the name of Jesus Christ. The truth is Jesus Christ. He is the way. What was his way? His way wasn't 5,000 and 4,000 being fed. His way wasn't walking on the water. His way wasn't in the tombs of Gadara. His way his way was up a hill called Golgotha. His way was to hang on an old rugged cross and bow his head and die. That's the death. You and I can be in the likeness of his death through true repentance. His way was carried from the old rugged cross wrapped in his garment and brother Billy laid in a borrowed tomb Joseph of Arimathea the way that we follow him is the likeness of his death with repentance the likeness of his burial which is at baptism Paul told the Roman church we are buried with him in baptism And on the third day, Mary and the other Mary came to the garden bearing spices to anoint his body. But there was an angel sitting on the head of the tomb and at the foot and said, Why seek you the living among the dead? He's not here. He is risen. The way of Jesus. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Sister Maria, it, it, it wasn't any miracle. It wasn't the water into wine. His way was Calvary. The death is repentance. The burial is baptism. And the resurrection is the supernatural infilling of the Spirit of God. For if we have been with Him in the likeness of His death, we shall also be with Him in the likeness of His resurrection. If the same Spirit that brought Christ forth from the grave dwell in you, it will quicken your mortal bodies. That's the way. That's the way. And I want you to hear me right now. And I want you to know that I believe this with all of my heart. If you've never heard the message preached of salvation, and today is your first time, then God bless you. If you've heard the truth, and you haven't obeyed it, You've got another chance today. And you want to know why? Because of mercy. <laughs> because the Bible says, and I don't have it in my notes, just came to me. Brother McKinney, the Bible says, the gospel shall be preached in all the world. And then what's it say, Brother Dole? Then shall be the end. So everybody's guaranteed to hear it once. But if you've heard it again and again and again, the reason you've heard it 
is because His mercy endureth forever. Stand with me.